إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما الرجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرهام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وكولوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويكفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدع دلالة وكل دلالة في النار. Verily all the praise and certainly all of the glorification and all of our dedication and all of our magnification should be for Allah in Allah alone. And I publicly, I inwardly, and I outwardly attest and profess and confess that there is nothing or no one that deserves to be worshipped except for Allahu Jalla fi Thana subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Al Mustafa, Al Amin, Abu Qasim, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi is the last of messengers sent to guide mankind from the darkness into the light. An anwan al yawm fiqh al waqi'ah. Fiqh al waqi'ah, ya ikhwan. Many of the brothers, they don't know about this science called fiqh al waqi'ah. Understanding the current affairs, understanding the circumstances, understanding the state of the ummah, understanding the context of the reality. Many of us, we've studied fiqh al ibadah, Maybe some of us have studied fiqh al-nikah or fiqh al-mu'amalat or fiqh al-janazah but the topic of fiqh al-waqi'ah knowledge of the current affairs, ya ikhwan, it is so important, ya ikhwan it is so important, my dear brothers and when we look into the science, my dear brothers based upon the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ which is found in Imam Bukhari in his Sahih the Prophet ﷺ went on to say مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّحُ فِي الدِّينِ if Allah, he wants good for you, he'll give you comprehension of this religion, ya ikhwan. So being people that are in the so-called land of milk and honey, the West, where I was born, my father was born, my grandfather was born. I know a little bit more than many of my brothers that came from different countries about how things go down in this society, ya ikhwan. We look at the situation in light of, ya ikhwan, the importance of how the ulama, the scholars, they stated clearly that those who lead the ummah, and give answers to solve his problems should have knowledge, understanding of the circumstances and the realities. Hence, one of the famous sayings is, is that the hukum, the ruling on the thing, is a projection of one who understands of it and that cannot be achieved except by understanding the circumstances surrounding the issue for which they have not given an answer, Yahweh. So many people, they come from different countries, Yahweh. And this is why it's so important, me as a new Muslim, alhamdulillah, we learn from the ulama, ya ikhwan, from amongst them. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, in his very famous book, which many Muslims, they don't know about, 
He has a book called I'lam Muwaqi'in, Ya Akhwan, which I'm still trying to purchase. The best way I guess you can translate that is those signatories or those who sign, those who try to sign for Allah as John making things halal and haram, something like this. My, my translation may be off a little bit. The Sheikh said in there that I, here in the West, I don't have to take a fatwa from overseas, Ya Akhwan. I'm going to look for the fatwa from the ulama that are in this country, ya Ikhwan. Because the scholar who lives abroad doesn't know what I go through every day, ya Ikhwan. And just like they have problems in those countries, I can't make a fatwa, or any of the scholars make a fatwa, or anybody in Najwa make a fatwa for over there, ya Ikhwan. Because you need to know the how, the circumstances that the people are going from. So from this, ya Ikhwan, fiqh means understanding what concerns the Muslims with regard to their own affairs, against those that are plotting and planning Yahwan to destroy Islam from without and from within, my dear brothers. Understanding reality in order to reach a proper ruling is important duty and it's only for specialized, smart groups of seekers of knowledge to do this. So when we look at this situation, Yahwan, many Muslims, they don't know where to get their news from. The best news for inna astak al-hadith, kitabullah. وَخَيْرٍ هُدَىٰ هُدَىٰ مُحَمِّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَا إِخْوَانِ It's clear for us, clear as day, if you understand what's being said, my dear brothers. So when we look at this situation, my dear beautiful brothers, when we all love you for Allah, where do you get your information? Al-Khabar. Where do you get your news from? From the newspapers? From magazines? From specialized journals written by think tanks? By periodicals? by tabloids you know when you go to the grocery store you see all the old ladies there they go and they find out what's going on with this person and that person they spend it that's probably one of the most distributed pieces of information that people buy they get their news from that some people they call it fake news right where do you get your news from from twitter from reddit from instagram from facebook from youtube from tiktok some of these they may actually be really important in getting some information because it gives you an alternative to the media sources, Ya Ikhwan. My parents, they got their media their whole life from radio and TV. I don't have a TV in my house, I have a computer, but I listen to the radio every now and then, Ya Ikhwan. Who is trustworthy when we're getting our news, Ya Ikhwan? This is the question we need to be asking. Who is reliable? Thiqah. There's a science in Islam called Khabra Thiqah. The Rijal, Ilm al Rijal, who said what? Name us your men where you got your information. People listen to or watch CNN. Some of them watch Fox News. Some ABC, NBC, some Sky News. Some claim to be the most reliable, trusted source of information, Ya Ikhwan. So Ya Ikhwan, one thing with social media is it gives the common man like me and you to give our own narrative and tell our own story, Ya Ikhwan. So that's why you find many of the youth, they're on these social media outlets, Ya Ikhwan. There is some good, and there is some bad. It depends on how you use this tool. We are talking about and tell everybody today that the chuppah was about fiqh al waqi'ah. Knowledge of the current affairs. Ya Ikhwan, many of us, we turn to the news and our language. We want to know about the natural disasters in our country. The fires that are in the sky going across the country. Many of us, we want to know about volcanoes, floods, droughts, earthquakes, humanitarian aid or lack of it. Where is our media? Where is the Muslims' media, ya ikhwan? Where is the Muslims' media, ya ikhwan? We tried to start years ago, Muslim youth media, and the Muslims are so far back behind in the past, they have not been supporting Muslim youth media, ya ikhwan, which is essential. More essential than the chandeliers that you see in some masjids. More essential than you see in the domes on the top of the masjids. More essential than you see in the minarets, which we can't even call the adhan, which would be a media. Muslim media is important, my dear brothers. So much so, ya ikhwan, that media sometimes it finds its way in music. I grew up on the hip-hop culture, ya ikhwan, so I got lots of my news from hip hop music and from watching gangster movies when I was young, Yahwan. Some of them good, some of them bad, Yahwan. The question comes now, my dear brothers who controls the media? Who controls the music? Who controls the video games? Who controls the websites? We're talking about fiqh al waqiyah. I know people, Yahwan, who live on Facebook 
who live on Twitter, who live on Tumblr, who live on YouTube, who live on TikTok. The question is, brothers, is media bad or how are we using it? So now my question, my dear brothers in Islam, here we are, 2023. Media, Yahwan, is something that in certain countries now, they've stopped the broadcast of being able to hear the Adhan or watch certain masjids or certain people praying. This has been decreased, Yahwan, which is quite interesting. When we look at the situation, Yahwan, Allah Ta'ala has told the believers, and it's something, Yahwan, what our deen is based upon who said what. They used to ask, who said that? Name us your men. Who said what you're saying? Give us your chain of narration. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ وَذِبِ اللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا إِنْ تُسِيبُوا قَوْمٍ بِجَحَالَةٍ فَتُسْبِحُوا عَلَىٰ مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ يَا أَخْوَانِ Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, O oh, you have Iman. If a fasik, an evil person, comes to you with any khabar, any news, verify it. Lest you should harm people in ignorance, and afterwards then you become neglectful of what you have done. And regretful, ya akhwan. So when we look at the thing, ya akhwan, we have to examine information when it comes to us. And the question comes, and this is something that I ask my brothers, do you know what istidlal means? Do you know what... Do you know what Dalil means, what Hujja means, what Burhan means? If you translate it in English, it all means proof, but there are different types of proof, ya ikhwan, within the sciences of Islam. It's something that somebody more knowledge than me, they need to explain, my dear brothers. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ كُلْحَاتُ الْبُرْحَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, say, O Muhammad Sallallahu to them, produce your proof if you are truthful, ya ikhwan. How many times have you heard, Oh, I heard so-and-so said that so-and-so got divorced. Why well, I heard so-and-so, he did this or she did that. And the question you got to ask that person, well, where did you hear that from? And they don't want to give you who it's from, but yet they want to give you information. Say, well, where did you get that? This is one of the first Arabic sentences that I learned as a new Muslim from one of my sheikhs. I was taught something by a Muslim who was very sincere, but he wasn't knowledgeable when I started to do it. And I met a sheikh and the sheikh said, brother. Where'd you get this from? I said, oh, Falan wa Alan told me this. He said, brother, do you have the lil from Kitab wa Sunnah? Is it based on an authentic hadith? And I showed me back then, Yahwan, you have to have citations to sort your information. So Yahwan, Imam al nawawi rahmatullahi, one of the scholars of Islam, he went on to say, usually a person hears truth and lies. So he speaks of everything that he hears he is lying but telling of the things that did not happen and lying of speaking of something other than the way that it happened. So he may have some of the information. And I used to have a friend that went to the university. He now has a master's degree in some science, I don't remember. But he was telling me, his professor was saying, Ya Ikhwan, and it's quite interesting. He had a way to ask somebody a few questions. Oh, because uh, he had some information. Oh, I, I heard that there was a fight uh, uh, over here. It, it was the girl with the blonde hair, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, how did you know? He said, yeah, she was the tall one. Yeah, yeah, how did you know? And he's just guessing. So now he knows it's a girl with blonde hair and she's tall. And then he said, yeah, w w w was, she, was she the one who had like a loud mouth? No, no, she was the silent one. Oh, yeah, yeah, so now he knows he's got another piece of information, yeah, Juan. The more you open your mouth, yeah, Juan, the more people that get information from you. So we have to be careful with what we say. Akuli kuli hadha wa sabfa tubalik wa salam swing me swing for sabfa ruhu in hu kufuru rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد كثير طيب مبارك فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى. The great scholar Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ya akhwan, he wrote this book called I'lam al -Muaqeen. and he went on to say in it that the Mufti and this is something very fascinating to me as a new Muslim. I've asked different Muslims from different backgrounds, different cultures, what it means. And I found that depending upon where you're from, people, they understand it differently. The mufti or the judge, the qadi, is not able to issue a fatwa or a verdict without understanding two things. 
Number one, understanding and having a good grasp of the reality. He should have a good understanding of what's happening on the basis of the circumstantial evidence and other signs so that he is in full, total understanding. Yeah. So there was a topic maybe about three, four years ago it came in, I don't like to even use the word, but quote unquote, the Afro-American community, which uh, that's a discussion within itself, where some brothers were saying, Sheikh Folan over in such and such a land, he don't care about us here in the hood. And they're talking about Philadelphia and New York. And the brothers had a big discussion. Does the Sheikh care or he doesn't care? And it even got to the level where they were saying that the Sheikh, he doesn't lose sleep over what's happening over here to the people over here in the West. He's got his own problems over there. Wallahu ta'ala alam wa alam yaqran. Do we lose sleep for what's happening in the Muslim countries? Unless it's only our country where we're from, most of the times, not all, some of the Muslims are like, psh, psh. Uh, my phone, yeah, one last week, the brothers in Ethiopia, they're suffering over there. Lots of horrible things are happening over there. Some people, they're like, eh, it's not my country, I don't care. In the Malmu'minuna Ikhwa. The believers are brothers, Yahwan. We should be concerned about the Muslims. Kulu Mekan was a man, one in sand. All place, all time, all people. So the Shaykh wanted to say, number two, understanding what is required in the light of these circumstances, which means understanding the ruling of Allah that he issued in his book and on the lips of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa then he should apply that to one another. So my dear brothers, Fiqh al it is a Sharia sense, is undoubtedly something that is obligatory, but that is not for every single individual, Yahweh. But some of us, we need to understand the science. There's one brother I know, mashallah, he writes in one of the newspapers and he does excellent work. I can't remember his name, but he's a great writer, Yahweh. We need more writers. We need more speakers. We need more talkers. We need more du'at. The Muslims is sitting on the sideline doing nothing, Yahweh. Understanding what is going on, Yahwan, in the current affairs, political analysis, understanding realities of the situations, times, place, otherwise, Yahwan, the Mufti, his fatwa may not be meet the people's needs, it may be on their ability to implement, Yahwan. So where are we going with all of this, Yahwan? One of the ayahs that one of the sheikhs he wrote in his book, he went on to bring this ayah, Yahwan. Call Allah Ta'ala, وَلَكِنَّ كُنُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابِ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تدرسون. Rather, you should be Rabbaniyin, high-level scholars, because you teach the book and you studied it, Ya Ikhwan. Studying is not only Hiv, that's part of our deen, but it's reading Tafsir, Ya Ikhwan. Our religion has been completed, my dear brothers. And Imam Rahimahullah, Imam Malik, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he made a very beautiful statement. I forgot to write it in Arabic, but he went on to say, what was not considered deen in those days is not deen today. So the latter part of the Ummah will not set right except by that which set the first part, Yahweh. And the first question, Min aina laka hadha? Ahi, where you get your information from? Who told you that? Where's your source? You have Dalil? This is one of the first things as a new Muslim that I was told and I taught by some of the brothers. Ahi, you have Dalil for that? You have evidence for that, brother? Where's your evidence? Where's your proof? Well, Sheikh so-and-so said, Okay, we love, we respect Sheikh so and so, but what's his Dalil? Where did he get it from? And one thing, Ya Ikhwan, I learned about Ibn Qayyim, as well as Sheikh Uthameen and many other great scholars, they had a beautiful ability. When you read some of the books, they would write on a topic and they'd bring all the proof in the Dalil and you're like, that's it. Then you turn, what Aqsahu, what did who the Sheikh comes and he brings Dalil on the opposite side, Ya Ikhwan. And then after all of that, he says, Wallahu alam, I think based upon this and this, I think this is the right answer. And Allah Ta'ala, he knows best. This is the way, ya ikhwan of ilm. You study a situation, you say, this is what I think, this is what I understand. Wallahu alam, dhalik. Ya ikhwan, we have to be really careful where we get our information, who we listen to these days, ya ikhwan. People are coming out of nowhere, speaking out of nowhere, ya ikhwan. We have to ask them, akhi, barakallahu fiqh, may Allah reward you for your hirs, trying to teach the religion, but akhi, where do you get this from? And who taught you? And where's your chain of narration? And who did you study under? This used to be important, now it's not. With that, 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim fil alameen in akum ajeel. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help the Muslims to give us an intellect that we can be able to discern between haq and batil, ya akhwan. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us an intellect, ya akhwan, that we can see truth from falsehood, ya akhwan. And we can practice what is true and, and stay steadfast upon the haq with that hadama indi wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. and to keep it live streaming on for the Quran. Sure, you can take it off. It's the وصله الصف ووصله